Hello, welcome into Cleo Ra. I'm going to be doing a reading today for whoever needs it the most. Uh, if you're new here, I like to do a tarot lottery and let whatever message is most needed by the collective flow through me. This is going to be somewhat of a shamanic reading. We're going to go quite deep into the spiritual work and uh, I'm going to invite my guides in now. Thank you, Archangel Michael, for blessing and protecting this reading. I invite in any non-physical of the love and the light who wishes to convey a message through me to whoever may be watching this video. I allow you to use me as a clear channel at this time and thank you in advance for your love and your guidance. Okay. We'll also be pulling a couple of runes today. So let's get into it. Okay, Nine of Swords energy, Eight of Cups, okay, so there could be a painful separation or a painful ending going on for somebody, there's a lot going on in your mind, whoever this reading is for, we've got the King of Swords energy, you could feel like, you know, it's it's too much, right? I'm getting this energy of, oh, this is, this is too much, right? Ten of Wands, King of Swords, Nine of Pentacles. See, there's this real need here for you to clear, clear your mind with the King of Swords and to bring your mind. They're giving me the sky. They want you to bring your mind up into the sky symbolically, right? They want you to be above it all and raise your consciousness up out above all of this. There are beautiful energies here with the Nine of Pentacles and the Ace of Cups. Three of Swords energy. Two of Cups. I'm hearing heartbreak leading on to the real thing. Five of Wands here. Wow. With the Three of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. I'm getting this message that Spirit is really trying to give you signs at the moment. That whatever this situation is up here with the Nine of Swords, the message I'm getting is that if it was right for you, it wouldn't feel like this. There's no happy ending to an unhappy storyline. And this is a very clear message with the Two of Cups, Ace of Cups, Nine of Pentacles. That some sort of heartbreak has been a really hard lesson for you. But you can see here with the Two of Cups that... There are smoother waters ahead, okay? But I feel like this is something that you're going to have to fight for, okay? And I feel like the main thing for you at the moment is to fight for peace. It's to fight for clarity with this King of Swords and, and fight to get your mind back, to get your mind cleared from this burden and to understand that Nine of Swords energy isn't love. It's a pathway with the swords that we have to go through to get to the pentacles, right? So this is a stage on your pathway that's essentially redirecting you to who you truly are, right? Because they keep saying love doesn't feel like that. Love does not feel like that, okay? <laughs> like there's this message of taking your lessons and knowing the best is ahead of you, right? Let's have a look. Show me this Eight of Cups. Nine of, nine of Cups here. So whatever this is, it feels, it feels bad, right? And it feels terrible, but that's why there's so much relief when you let go. I feel like there's this energy of needing to let go of the burden, okay? They're telling me you've been representing something that isn't, your true spiritual family. You were trying to represent being connected or loyal to someone, but the evidence speaks for itself here. I'm hearing know what you represent, right? So maybe someone in your life you've been dealing with reminds you of a soul group member or a soulmate, but I'm getting this as practice on your way to discerning who you truly are and what you truly represent. With the 10 of wands, the ones are all about passion and respect, but you have to know who your team is. You have to know what team you're on. Otherwise, all of that loyalty is wasted, okay? Because you can't really be loyal to someone who's not loyal to you. You can't pledge yourself 
to a group or a family that isn't your true spiritual family. It will keep being hurtful. It will keep, you know, scarring you, I'm getting. So with the Nine of Cups coming straight after the Eight of Cups, I'm getting that whatever this nightmarish situation is, I'm getting that the minute you let go, the relief will flood in, right? Because in comparison to the Nine of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles is heaven, right? So as much as it feels like you're on this road, maybe there's some part of you trying to hang on. We've all been there. We've all been there where we think that if we're just loyal and we just stay and we just keep trying and keep trying, loyalty is the key word here. We think if we keep trying that it will pay off in the end. But they, they keep giving me that Abraham Hicks quote. There's no happy story. Sorry, there's no happy ending to an unhappy story. They're telling me if you stay in this Nine of Swords situation, it'll just keep taking you down step by step into the underworld, right? So there's this need for you to kind of switch off the emotions you have for someone else or some situation and put yourself first. Because what they're saying is, you can't know what you truly represent until you know who you are and what team you are part of. And until you prioritize yourself and think, you know what, no one is more worthy of love and devotion than I. Why should I be devoted to someone who's not devoted to me? Why should I be loyal to someone who's not loyal to me? Something's been giving you your signs, right? And I'm getting that, you know, there could be an attachment here. Like, it could be your inner child that's attached to this idea of, you know... We get these notions when we're young that, you know, maybe we have the very first partner, right? The very first boyfriend or girlfriend we have. We don't want to split up. We want to be, for example, one of those couples that have been together since we were teenage sweethearts. Well, they're saying that, you know, you've got to let go of that, right? You are immortal. And there's something here about you truly discovering who you are, where your loyalties truly lie. And you can't be loyal to your true spiritual family before you've even been loyal to yourself, right? Nine of Swords, show me. Page of Cups. Death. So you could keep on reaching out to somebody or someone could be, you know, keeping on reaching out to you. But with the Page of Cups, it's an immature energy. It feels so easy to just text someone back. It feels so easy to just go down that road again. But what Spirit's saying is, Oh, God, this is something that's so easy leading to a nightmare, right? And it's going to keep repeating until you learn to represent yourself first, alone if needs be, right? And have that loyalty and devotion to yourself. What they're saying here is true loyalty and devotion to the self is true loyalty and devotion to the spiritual family, even if you haven't met them yet, okay? So there is a spiritual guardianship here. I'm getting guardianship because you can see this cloak surrounding these people. So it's almost feeling to me like your spiritual family is trying to get you to stop reaching out to someone. Stop thinking that we have this thing in the modern era where we expect everyone to be nice and civilized. And when it comes to the real nitty gritty of dealing with them, they don't care about society's rules. Do you get where I'm coming from? The real true nature of humans comes out and... Real life is different than how we sort of imagine people should behave. So this is going to keep getting real and, and, you know, it's going to keep getting quite nightmarish until you learn to do the thing that you find hardest at this moment in time, which I feel like is letting go of something you thought you were loyal to. Seeing the bigger picture with the King of Swords, letting your intellect rule over your emotions. And the minute you do that, it goes click. Ace of Cups, more love flows in for you. This could be love from the spirit realm. This could be love from your soul group who are constantly connected to you. But you're going to feel amazing once you learn to stop representing what isn't yours to represent. I hope this is making sense. King of Swords, you are yet to find out who you truly are and who your true spiritual family are. Show me the king. Yeah, no more back and forth here. There's this need to really clarify your mind, get it to a pinpoint of focus. And there's a maturity needed here because with the Page of Cups, it could be that you think someone's just, you know, a friend in the modern day society and that we're all one big happy family. But no, the universe keeps letting you know that's an illusion. You know, we are tribal. We have soul plans and spiritual plans that we need to 
honour, right? We need to honour those plans and the universe will keep smacking us about and our emotions will keep telling us what is right and what is wrong, what is for us. Scrap the right and wrong because I'm not talking about generic ideas of right and wrong. I'm not talking about big generalisations of right or, right or wrong. I'm talking about what is right or wrong for you personally. What is aligning with your true spiritual path and what isn't? Because something needs to end here. And I feel like it would be oh so easy to continue just to feel like, oh, well, I, I want someone to go out drinking with, so I'll text this person. You know what I mean? It's something little like that. Maybe you don't want to feel like you're completely alone. Maybe this is one of those things where people feel like it's better to have any friend or any partner than to be alone, right? But this is an energy of having to break out in a powerful way and stop representing what isn't yours to represent, right? Spirit saying cats and dogs. If you're a cat, why do you keep trying to act like a dog? If you're a dog, why do you keep trying to act like a cat? There's this energy here of you're representing something that for you represents a fall down in frequency into a metaphysical layer that you don't belong in, okay? So you've got to see the bigger picture. And I'm saying don't get too wrapped up in the 3D details of, oh, but if I don't text this person, who will I have? Or whatever the case may be, because there's always new ahead. There's always better ahead. And when the universe feels your frequency of self-respect, when the universe knows you're willing and ready to honour your true spiritual family, miracles happen, okay? Which is why we've got this big, big turnaround here with the Nine of Pentacles, Nine of Cups, and the Ace of Cups. So I feel like you're about to come into some real fiery, determined, big picture thinking. Knowing that there are no dead ends unless you stay representing something that isn't yours to represent. Knowing that when you free yourself, the pathways are multiplicitous, and the best is always yet to come. There's so much better ahead of you. There are so many better people ahead of you. But this is a mind thing, right? With the Nine of Swords. This is something you've got to conquer in your own nature and in your own mind. And when you do this, the lesson you learn in this storyline will benefit you in all the lives to come, right? This will stay with your higher self forever. So it may feel hard, but once you get it done, you've done it. And you will never have to repeat this lesson in any other lifetime. They're giving me codependence here, which is often, you know, all humans, we all suffer with the same human condition where we just want to feel safe in physicality. We want to feel cushioned. We want to feel like there are people there for us. But I'm getting that in some relationship, it's going to keep wasting your time. It's like, yeah, you can keep going around in circles, but tick tock, we only get so many years on this planet, right? We only get so many years to do our spiritual work per lifetime so there's something here about getting it done getting it done being militant with the king of swords being a soldier being like you know what i'm good i've got the whole etheric realm supporting me i've got a soul group that are connected to my higher self we are essentially the same being split off into many and then we've got the star energy on the nine of pentacles you know what that just gave me a rush of energy oh as if I'm like, I'm tingles. There's some sort of divine mother energy that wants to squeeze you and hug you. They're tingling me up so bad right now. I don't know if you can see that. That came through me like a rush of energy. And I feel like that's what's waiting for you to be the true star you really are. Because latching onto someone else's timeline is diminishing your power. This is going to be so easy. The minute you let the universe know, you know what, I'm done. I feel like some sacred rage could help you with this rather than feeling fearful anger is a step up the frequency ladder i feel like you need to have some pride i feel like you need to have some sense of not giving a crap you need to be like i don't i don't care about your social stock market i don't care if i'm getting cast i don't care about whatever it is you've been caring about you've got to stop caring and you've got to get fiery here Get fiery and determined and full of that sacred divine fire because something's been squishing your soul and your shine and there's a divine mother energy that wants to squeeze you. I just had the urge to really squeeze you because I feel like you're a really sweet person and there's something that's been going on where they've been using your loyalty against you or you've been doing that, right? We've got to take responsibility for what we're creating. 
And it's so easy to be a really loyal person and mess up your whole life by being loyal to the wrong ones, right? Imagine, if, if I'd have been loyal to my mother just because she's my mother, knowing she's a narcissist who wants me dead, that would have messed up my whole life. And I've had other narcissists trying to insinuate I'm disloyal to my family because narcs are all on the same team. By not speaking to my mother, they try and say that I'm disloyal. No, I'm loyal to my soul group and I'm loyal to God first. So this is about getting your house in order, right? There's someone here that does not have your best interest in, at heart. And with the devil coming out with the death card, this is not a road you want to go down. This is a big contrast between death and the devil versus these energies here. They're saying you just have to be brave and make a big decisive move and be belligerent if you have to, right? Be belligerent, be like, nah, you know what? I'm switching it up. Are you loyal to me? Why are they the leader and you the follower? Why aren't you the leader and them the follower? Because there's a dynamic here where someone automatically thinks that they're the boss or maybe you are naturally following them or something like that. But it needs to switch up. You need to be the main character of your own life here. And the minute you do, the universe is going to switch you onto a whole new track and you're going to feel this relief, this sparkly, beautiful relief. You're going to get major etheric cuddles from multiple energies. Yeah, they're tingling me again. With this star card, you've got some rare elixir. You've got something beautiful that needs to be activated in this lifetime. There we go. Ace of Cups with the Four of Wands, right? This is about you getting through the gateway, aligning with the true metaphysical version of yourself, aligning with your higher self. They're saying, don't be scared. Someone's saying to me, don't be, to tell you, don't be scared. Come on, baby. You can do this, right? It's quite overwhelming, the emotions I'm getting through here, okay? Like, literally, someone feels a great deal of emotion for you because it's coming through me. I feel like I'm going to cry right now. Show me this Three of Swords. Victory, victory. Okay, so something's been hurtful for you, but you're going to get victory over it. And again, the Six of Wands is a Leo card. It's about putting your crown on. You never bow down to anyone but God. No one is above you. You are sovereign. You are valuable. You bring huge amounts of energy from the non-physical that no one else could bring. You are unique. You are special. Someone's seen your pain here. And again, I'm getting that emotional energy, okay? There's non-physical energies here who have felt your pain and they want to hug you. They want to cuddle you. But they also want you to have this victory, you know? Leo energy is very proud. The lion, right? Leo energy does you know, shine. And that's who you are. You are, you are destined to shine, my darling, destined to shine and destined to be around people who are harmonic, who are beautiful. They're giving me the cooling waters of the Christ. That beautiful, imagine having sore feet that were all blistered and burning from walking in the desert for 10 hours or whatever. And then someone comes to you with a beautiful bowl of cool water and they wash your feet that's the energy that's waiting for you this beautiful blissful cold cool healing water the color blue could mean something to you the healing blue of the christ i don't know why they're telling me that but there's something about you being blissful you being cooled down especially with the water on this card but first of all you've got to fire yourself up to get your dignity back, to get your self-respect back, self-esteem, right? And then come the blissful waters, then comes the healing and recognition with the uh, six of wands. There's something in your future. Maybe this is you recognizing the beauty in yourself, recognizing the gorgeous, immortal, golden nature of your soul. But there's a victory over heartbreak here, a big victory. And they're saying big cuddles again, like there's some energy here that's trying to guide you, but you've got to let it in more, I feel. Feel the love, let the love in. Eight of cups here with the two of cups, show me. Cards are going a little bit. A 
again, we've got the Eight of Cups here and the Eight of Cups here. What they really need you to know is that wish fulfillment is ahead of you, okay? And it will feel like packing up your stuff and going to a whole new level. But what they're saying is, that's life, my darling. If I'm speaking to someone fairly young, and you could be, you know, young in physical age or young in soul, I don't know. But they're saying, that's life. This feels like a big deal now. But you will start to realise how easy it is to leave situations behind that don't honour you, right? Because there's this King of Wands energy here with this Two of Cups. You may feel like you're leaving this King of Wands behind on some energetic level, but this Devil is not the King of Wands. I feel like they took something from your magnetic field and they've been reflecting it back at you so that you've been confused and you've been thinking that this here is this king of wands but what they're saying is actually when you leave this situation behind or this devil behind whatever this represents for you some sort of karmic loop i'm getting once you leave that behind you will see that they were never this king of wands anyway right someone who is spiritually meant for you an ally a love bond a true love bond someone's been confusing you and i feel like it's because They've taken your energy from your magnetic field. I just saw 21, 12 on my clock and they've been reflecting it back at you. So you've been being loyal to someone that you thought was this king of wands, but it's not actually this king of wands. This is a member of your soul group. So some human or some devil you've been dealing with has been reflecting this king of wands' energy back at you. Okay, I know how confusing this gets. I do. So you've been feeling this person's energy in this devil creature because they're a thief of energy, all right? They're a trickster. And that's why it's tearing on your heart. That's why it's been feeling like a nightmare, right? They're saying wish fulfillment is on the path ahead of you. This devil was never the real one. Never the real one. And when you leave the fake version behind, when you stop feeding this person your energy, you're going to see their true colors. And you're going to see, oh, Cleo Ra was saying that. Like this person was siphoning energy from your magnetic field that is connected to the higher self of this King of Wands. I hope this is making sense. Because I feel like this devil's been siphoning the King of Wands' energy from your magnetic field because you two are connected at the heart. I'm hearing at the crown. You see his crown? You two are connected at the crown chakra, you and this King of Wands. So it's easy for someone to get into your energy field and steal this person's energy. I think I've got that, I've got that across. Five of Wands, I'm, I'm hearing, make no mistake, this is a fight. Make no mistake, this is a fight, right? This is a fight for your happiness. This is a fight for your long-term beautiful dream of life to be manifest on earth. This is a fight for you to live the true vision that you planned for yourself before you even got here. And you must, you must activate that fiery energy for the fight. I'm getting, you must do it, okay? <clears throat> for whoever this resonates with okay let's have a look see what else is coming out went a bit deep there there's a lot of emotion for you a lot of emotion coming through for you lots of affection true devotion there we go ten of wands energy again almost there okay you are almost there and it's so close i can feel that the minute you let the universe know ah i get it i get it click all this love comes in, all this beautiful freedom comes in. You start shining, you start being who you're truly meant to be. There we go, battle one. And um, again, that energy. This is a fight for your life. This is a fight for your dreams. This is a fight for you to be who God sees you as. Not performing for the devil or being manipulated by the devil or being lured down into a dark, dusty, cold, loveless basement of life via someone who was only stealing energy off of your magnetic field and reflecting it back at you anyway right there we go we've got the six of wands twice here we've got gift victory winning okay there are so many gifts waiting for you and i feel like you're just you're just so close it's like you've just got to click your mind into the right position click your mind into feeling like you're great Okay, there's some frequency thing here. You've got to get up into self-fulfillment energy. You first, filling up your own cup before, you know, you're loyal to others. You've got to be loyal to yourself here. Okay. 
Okay, we've got the deep purple rose. And again, this is the crown ch chakra connection you have with the real one. Okay, not some little fake one. I'm getting that this one is a watered down version of the real thing, which is why they keep hurting you. They keep tricking you into thinking they're a real teammate or a real ally or the sort of person you want to hang around with even. But really, it's a fraudulent thing and it's going to slow you down getting to your true ten of cups, getting to where you truly belong, right? We've got the letter R here. We've got the letter W. We've got the star, like literally. This comes out so rarely for me, this bottle cap. This is also my sign of a good luck charm. I, I've got a thing for bottle caps, right? When I see a bottle cap on the street or whatever, I know it's a little sign. And uh, this is your sign that you are infinite. You can go in any direction you want, but your pathway is calling you. Your true pathway is calling you. Mm -hmm. We've got the infinity symbol. So you're looping back around with members of your soul group. It's inevitable. That which is likened to itself is drawn. The number eight could mean something to you. But this is reassurance that you're never alone and that you're always looping back to your soul group members. We've got the throat chakra. It's all about integrity. It's all about representing something true and pure and beautiful and knowing thyself, knowing who you are and holding that positioning no matter what. You've been holding the wrong positioning. It's a beautiful display of loyalty. I'm getting, you know, you've got beautiful loyalty, but you've just got to know what you're being loyal to, right? And don't be tricked by these creatures. We've got the angel wings. There we go. There's that big motherly energy that wants to wrap its arms around you. I'm getting the, the, the word Rita, the name Rita for some reason. And right and wrong. God, right and wrong. That's insane. Okay, so there's the wrong and there's the right. That's what I'm getting here. Six of Wands, baby, go get it. Be the strongest version of yourself you can possibly be. There's so much love for you, okay? So much love. I hope this has helped. Sending you a big cuddle and a kiss. Mwah.